Hi YouTube, Curtis Stewart, Living Off Grid. Uh, today I'm going to do some short uh, videos on how to make your own solar panel out of uh, solar cells that you can get on eBay. These are the ones I get on eBay. They are 3x6 um, polycrystalline cells. They have uh, 1.8 watts a piece per cell and half of a volt. So that would be uh, I think 3.2. 66 amps something like that so I'll um, I get these short tabbed because they're cheaper and you can see that they got a little bit of tab left on here because someone had tabbed them and then they left a little piece so what I do is I, I buy these and they're super cheap so I just take and I cut off the tab just like that be very careful with these they're, they're very fragile and then I just kind of easily push them back down and I got a whole stack here that I've already done and I usually I go through and sometimes I find ones that are kind of broken or whatever and I separate them out between the broken ones and the full ones and I, I cut off all the tabs first and uh, then I start um, putting them together so um, for your solar panels what you're going to need is your solar cells you need some tabbing wire and uh, I got this off of eBay also it's a hundred feet and it was a couple bucks um, and then you'll need some bus wire and this is to bus all of your rows of cells together. And it's just like tabbing wire, uh, it's just a little thicker. And keep in mind, this, this tabbing wire already has uh, some solder on it. So I've seen a lot of videos where people will solder all the little dot, dots on the back of these um, cells. This is your negative, this is your positive. And people will use solder and dot those but it makes for a rough um, spot on there so when you put your backing on uh, it, you know it can crack these so I don't use solder I just use what's on the, the tabbing wire itself so anyway uh, so you need that and then you'll need some flux and flux what flux does is it kind of opens up the cell to receive the solder so most people will use a solder pin which you can get in the kits or you can you can order them online I prefer the regular flux paste and the reason why I like this is because there's a lot in there it's fairly inexpensive uh, like a few bucks for that and when I cut my tab and wire I just dip them and stick them right in there and that's where I hold them so that when I go to use them I just take it out and it's got flux on it uh, and a, a lot of people that I've seen you say you need to cut your tabbing wire twice the length of your cell so that you can run it along the full edge there. I don't do that. I get just a little bit more than uh, the cell length because I tab it right there and then I leave that for the next panel. You don't need to go all the way across there. It's already getting connectivity through the whole panel if you just do it right at the end there. And it saves you on this and it's a lot easier. Another thing you're going to need is a solder gun. Uh, get a good solder gun, one that's probably 60 to 80 watts. This one's 60 watts. It works great. You're also going to need a junction box. You don't have to have a junction box, but I like it. It makes it look a little more professional and it's easier to work with. And this will come off the back of your panel. You'll run your wires into the back, and I'll show you that on another video. And then you'll have two wires coming out of here that are connected with MC4 wire connectors. So you'll have your wire connected to this that goes in the back, another wire that goes into your battery box, and you just clip them together, and then they're together. So that's what you need. Now, when I first start here, like I said, I like to cut all my tabs off of my panels first, the short tabs. If you buy them that aren't tabbed at all, then you don't have to worry about doing that. So I take them and I set them down here like this. I pull the trigger on my gun. Some of them you just get the light, they're like, they look like pins or screwdrivers um, and they don't have a trigger on them. But so I just pull the trigger and you can see it's smoking on the tip there. That's when I know it's ready to, to use. And I take my tabbing wire and I put it just, oh, about a half inch or so up the, 
the line here and I set it on the edge and I go slow and it's tapped just like that it's easy you can hear it squeaking or maybe on some of them you can't but on this one I can and that's how I know it's doing what it's supposed to so I'll do this side now Now just to have a little patience, it's not hurry up and get it done. Like I said, these things are super fragile, so have patience and do it right, and it'll make it go a lot easier. So that's how you do that side. Now once you have a bunch of them that you did like this, see that's how I know, I know it's tabbed because I can, you know, it's not coming apart. Once you have a bunch of them like this, you're going to run them together in a series. So right now, these two right here are positive leads. These are going to go to the bottom of the next one, to the negative side, or to the positive side, sorry. This is negative, the other side's positive. To the positive side, which is going to create a series. So two of these together, you double your volts, and you double your watts. The amperage will stay the same. Now if you were to run this on top of the next one on top of the next one, that would be parallel and your volts would stay the same and your amps would go up. So that's kind of how that works. So how I do that is I get them down here like I bend up this side here. And I grab my next one. See I had a bunch of them already prepared. And I'll bend those up too a little bit just so it's ready for the next one. And I think I went a little too long on this this tab here, so I'll just cut it off. And I just use scissors for that because it's it works. <clears throat> and so we're going to want to put a little bit of flux on these tabs here to open them up to receive the solder. So I hold my trigger on my gun and I just dip the tip in the, in the flux and I just dab it on there. Just a little dab will do you. And I like this too because when the flux dries, it's kind of sticky. So it'll actually hold your tabbing wire down on the cell so you don't have to actually hold it in place. And I use my tape line here. And I, I bought this glass at a secondhand construction store. And it was an old window that I pulled apart and it cost me $5. So I actually got, it was a double pane, so I actually got two pieces of glass for five bucks, and that's what I'm gonna use. So I stick that down there like that, and I'm gonna use this just to hold it down a little bit so it doesn't move. And I wait for my gun to smoke again a little bit. There it goes. And I don't push very hard and like I said, you hear it squeaking, you know it's doing its job. And I can tell it's stuck. So I'm gonna move on to the next one and the next one. And I'll come and do this side. And I try to make these as even as possible. Some people leave a gap in between their cells. I like to get them as close as possible depending on how big my glass is and how many panels I want to fit or cells I want to fit per panel. So now that's stuck, just like that. And then you would move on to your next one and so on. Like right here, I already have several of them going. And on the panel I'm working with, I'm doing nine this way, and then I'll lay another set of nine next to it and another set of nine next to it going six this way. So I'll have all together, I think 50, I think what's that, 54 um, cells on this one panel. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, instead of having it 20 volts, I, or 27 volts, I guess that would be, I am going to split it in half. I'll do one uh, that's 13 and a half volts, the next one is 13 and a half volts in series, and then I'll run them parallel. So the total combination would be 13 and a half volts. So, till next time.